For some reason, I'm not seeing the live video. I think it just popped up because I went yeah. to your page too. Well, like, oh, it's up now. I'm it's up now. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Okay, here we go. So we are live, guys. We want, listen, I want you all to stop what you're doing and share. Let us know where you are tuning in from. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Sister to Sister Nationwide Girl Talk. Tonight, we are talking about checking on your prophetic friends. Amen, amen. Come on, I want you to share this broadcast. Share, share, share. We are going to release some encouragement tonight. We're just going to have a real, tra a real transparent conversation amen because sometimes we that's all we need all we need is a, all we need is a conversation you know yes. sometimes <laughs> we don't you know we, we get preached that we you know we get taught but sometimes we just need a conversation amen so i'm excited amen. guys i have prophetess genesis warren with us tonight we have prophetess kelly cruz with us tonight and i'm super excited these are my sisters yes. and i love them yes. i love their ministry yes. I, I enjoy yes. their ministry amen so listen, we're going to wait for a few more people to get on tonight. And um, I, I'm just super excited. Prophetess Kelly Cruz, uh, who is the founder and CEO of Kelly Cruz Ministries. And she also got, has a publishing company. And I, I was looking at that uh, earlier today. I was like, oh my God, she does a lot. And she's also <laughs> the founder of Surge Women. Am mm -hmm. I saying that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Amen. So, um, and so just such an encouragement to just so many women. I thank just you. thank God for her. She has an awesome prophetic ministry as well. Thank I mean, you. she can preach to y'all. She can preach. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> Amen. And then we have Prophet in Genesis Warren, my sister from Atlanta. She is the senior leader of Dominion Atlanta. And so listen, guys, when I say I love her, I love her. She, she, I met her at Aisha's, um, I think it was like an entrepreneurship um, mm -hmm. panel discussion. Mm -hmm. And man, she told the place down, y'all. I mean, <laughs> in my mind, I'm like, what? What just happened to St. Louis? You know, I said, oh, we definitely got to get her back. And so uh, I just love her and uh, I adore her ministry. And I mean, the woman of God is powerful you know, actually both of you. So I just thank God for you, both of you, both of your ministries and the prophetic mantle that's on your life as well. It is truly to be honored. Amen. I think a lot of the times we don't know how to truly honor the prophetic and especially those that are true. Amen. 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 And so, Amen. <laughs> um, because people don't understand what this comes with, what this entails. And so sometimes it can be very, very lonely it can be, it can be tough. You know, we go through the worst yes. spiritual warfare. Come on here. You know, we, <laughs> demonic, you know, demon attacks times, times 150, you know, but yes. we're praying and we, you know, we're prophesying, we're ministering, but yet we're going through so much behind closed doors. And yes. so listen, we, I want to just jump right in because I know these women of God, you know, that, you know, they, they listen, they're, they're, they're qualified to, <laughs> to speak Amen. on this. Amen. And so prophetess Genesis Warren, you know, I know you were the senior, senior leader of Dominion Atlanta. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so, but I, I know it come even with pastoring, you know, that's that, 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 listen, that's spiritual warfare all by itself. And so when people look at you, they say, man, she is together, you know, like, like, I mean, you're beautiful. Like, Hey, look, her oh, face feed. Mm -hmm. I mean, okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. Y'all yes, yes. are slayers, so slay slay all the time. And so yes. people don't understand, <laughs> you know, what that comes with. And so can we talk a little bit about that? It's just, just pastoring alone. 
Yes. Let me tell you, pastoring alone, y'all need to pray in tongues right now for all <laughs> single pastors. Okay? Pray in tongues for your girl. No English, all tongues. Okay? Because pastoring, of course, it's a lonely walk because um, when you're pastoring, um, most of the people who your life is surrounded by are those whom you lead. Um, Mm -hmm. so, you know, I'm very big on confidentiality. I don't discuss, you know, the saints business with other side, you know, I don't, I don't believe in that. Even if I'm overwhelmed, if it has something to do with a member, um, sharing it with another member of my church, that is just, that is just out of the question. So Mm -hmm. because my life is ministry, I'm probably 90% of the time surrounded by those whom I lead leaders whom I lead um so Mm -hmm. it's very challenging not to of course as a single pastor you know not to have their husband to go home to and have pillow talk and just vent so um it's a death walk for me it's a discipline um I've learned how to tame my tongue like I've never um known it before and you know what um ministry is interesting because I found out women of God and I'm sure you guys can attest that a lot of preachers don't know how to be friends Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. They just don't. It's very opportunistic. It's very. Mm-hmm. If you let me preach at your conference, you can preach for mine. And you know, I'm like, Jesus. y'all ought to be tired of preaching for your friends every year. Like y'all ought to be tired of getting the same speakers for your conference every year. You know. So it's very, it's very different for me. Um, like I said, as a single pastor, um, because also, you know, I don't want to be guilty of, um sharing with a friend something that maybe you know I've had to deal with with the individual because as pastors mm-hmm. we're forgiving and then your friend mm-hmm. looking at them like ain't that's the person you almost put at your church you know ain't you know mm-hmm. so it, it, it's very interesting to say the least um my relationship with the Lord has gone to another level you know just with pastor because there are some things that I can't tell the soul you know and I have to tell the Lord um and then I have my friends to where they balance mm-hmm. me out you know, mm-hmm. where I don't have to talk church stuff like, you know, hey, girl, let's go out. Let's go shopping. So I do believe in friendships. You need to be able to discern capacity and placement because mm-hmm. every friend that you pray with is not the friend that you need to go out and have a good time. With, well, you know, good. so I've just really been learning how to protect the purity um, of my uh, of my circle. Um because of course being a pastor my life is my church and my ministry so um i've just had to be extremely intentional it's so much i can go on and on and on and on and on yeah it's interesting do you Mm -hmm. think that it's harder to trust um having friends being a pastor because you know how like you said like it's it's a lonely road Mm -hmm. and but yet and still you know you have those around you you know mm-hmm. like you said you can go get go shopping and go mm-hmm. get your nails done and whatnot mm-hmm. but then you have those where you're you know you 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 they're, they're your confidant right mm-hmm. but if it is it hard to trust people with information maybe you know things that are absolutely yeah. absolutely um honestly um I have amazing friends I only have four friends only and I say that proudly um, because those are four people that I know I can trust with my life. You know, they say that if you can find three good friends in a lifetime, like you've struck gold. So I have four wow. friends and, you know, not 14, not 44, four, and I'm fine with them. However, I've discerned the placement and capacity. So some of my friends, I don't even discuss anything as it pertains to me pastoring. Not that they, I don't trust them, but it's just that some people, you venting to them becomes mm-hmm. a weight on them. You know, mm-hmm. everyone is not built to hear and, you know, not feel burdened after you hear me, mm-hmm. you know, having a conversation. So for me, when I'm going out with my girlfriends, you know, that I know that are just my good, you know, my good duties, you know, we're not mm-hmm. talking about church. We're talking about life, next business, you know, venture and different things like that. So mm-hmm. I try to just stick true to my friendships and some things I just don't bring to some of my friends I just don't got it one thing I've realized Mm -hmm. is that some people that you have some some friends that can handle your humanity and there's some that Mm can't and you have Mm -hmm. some people that can handle your spirit your spirituality but there are some Mm -hmm. that can't Mm -hmm. you know and so uh and you know you said if you got three good friends you struggle gold. I feel so I may have struck silver (laughs) because (laughs) 
Listen, you still got a whole me. life to live. <laughs> I'm asking God to help me. Prophetess Kelly Cruz, I know you you do a lot in ministry. You know, you you uh you are the CEO and founder of Kelly Cruz Ministry, and you you have your publishing company. And I mean you just do so much. And so, but yet I, we know that behind closed doors that it that comes with a price, right? You know, we understand that anything major, anything anointed is going to come with something. You know, you're going to be pressed. You're going to be crushed. You got all of that and some, but people still expect you to be front and center. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you handle that? Yes. Thank you, Prophetess Margaret. Thank you for having me. And um, it's an honor to be with you and Prophetess mm -hmm. Genesis tonight. And uh, and I, I just, um, you know, you have to balance yourself. You, you really have to... Right. It's not about compartmentalizing or putting something on the shelf. It's about having balance and um, being able mm -hmm. to understand why, or even if you can't understand why you're going through something, just really, uh, and not to sound overly, I know somebody could say, well, you're just sounding overly spiritual to me right now, but really having a true relationship with God to be able to handle everything that comes mm -hmm. at you and have a, a true prayer life, a true relationship with God, not just, um, not just, um, you know, giving, you know, the words and the, just the mouth. It's, it's mm -hmm. about having the action behind the actual relationship you have with God to be able to put things in perspective and balance and be able to handle everything that's on your plate. Because if, if you don't have the mm -hmm. true perspective that God wants you to have and not, you know, not everybody as even as prophetess Genesis was talking, not everybody is able to sit at her table. She, she has four friends. I, I probably, I might have two or three. <laughs> so, you know, so you, you in the silver club with me. Then. I Listen, the Lord <laughs> just <laughs> added the fourth one. The Lord just added the fourth one. Okay. okay. See, this was like, like two months ago. Okay. <laughs> okay. See, and so just being able to, um, have, people with you that will understand the depth of your destiny and and understand that you know you're you you can't have uh, people that are going to um question the validity of of your vision and your destiny around you to cause chaos and manufacture chaos and cause confusion and so That's i've good. had to be very selective with who I allow close to me. Sometimes mm -hmm. um, when I've traveled, it's been my daughter. I mean, to be honest with you, because she knows, she knows how I, she knows how I function. She knows what is needed. She knows what is necessary. And, uh, you know, just, and just being able to have, once again, the balance in life is going to allow you to be able to handle everything behind the scenes that people don't see. They still, uh, you know, I've just gone through something I, and, and, practice maybe I can share it um but I've just gone through something and I I still have a publishing company I still have clients I still have ministry I still have family I still have my children so you still still have to be able to function through and that that comes with the strength of God God giving you his strength to be able to balance and function amen and no go ahead and you can share it you know, okay. I, is it? Yeah, go ahead. I, I want you okay. to share it. I, yeah, I was going to ask you, share. like, are you going to share it? So yes, go ahead. I will share. And, you know, I'm not one of those people that take, and I'm not, you know, discrediting anybody who does this, but I'm not, I'm not the type of person to take a picture of myself in the hospital bed and, you know, put it on Instagram. I'm, I'm private, you know, and, and sometimes when you are a pastor or uh, somebody in, in the, you know, when people, you're a public figure, I'll just say it like that. You could be a pastor, prophet. It, it could be any type of title, but sometimes you have to keep yourself in a place of privacy for a moment until you know how, how things are maneuvering, how God is, God is the shifting outcome, right? and, and the outcome. Mm -hmm. even. And so in June, I was diagnosed with cervical cancer and um, I had been six since March. And, and so I, I didn't know what was going on, but because of COVID, I couldn't get into the doctor. And I, I finally got a doctor's appointment was diagnosed with cervical cancer. And so this whole summer I've been going to doctor's appointments, um, preparing for surgery and not just like very super invasive surgery because there was more to it. I've had two surgeries this summer, <laughs> you know, I've been in wow. bed. I've, um, been hospitalized uh, and I'm not saying this to have a pity party for myself I'm not saying no. this to get anybody's pity but I'm saying mm -hmm. it to your point of how do you handle 
what you're going through and then also mm -hmm. having to handle everything else on your plate. So in the midst of that, um, you know, I still have publishing clients. I still have ministry. Um, I still have um, to, to my family. I still have my children. And so just being able to say, God, give me the strength to get through this. So I did have surgery at the end of August and I'm, I'm past, I'm behind the surgery now and I'm healing. Thank God. And um, I know there's some more, there's some more process to this. And I went to the mm -hmm. doctor today and I've, I have another process to this, but I just thank God because at the end of the day, you, you really have to keep your faith in God and keep yourself grounded. So the enemy cannot come in and cause, uh, you know, chaos in your mind and ca cause your mind to be all over the place. So every day it's just about renewing my subscription, like keeping myself in Romans 12 and two every single day, renewing my mind, keeping my mind subscribed to Christ, keeping my mind in a place I where like I can, can <laughs> yeah. see what God wants me to see beyond what it looks like, you know? So that's where I've been. And I just thank God that God has given me vision. I said, God, I know you didn't like, you didn't bring me this far to just leave me here. I know you promised me this, 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 and this. So I had mm -hmm. to re remind God what he said to me. And that's where I am right now. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and listen, um, I like that. Uh, continue to subscribe um, yeah. to the Lord and to Christ and, and, and it's necessary to always not look at where you are, but look at what God has said. And Amen. so I, I, I can definitely relate to where you are right now because, you know, I was, I was once there, of course, you know, they just, you know, just told me right there, you know, in the hospital, Hey, you 5% chance, honey, that's all the life you got. And so, like I said, God is into turning nothings into something and he's into turning, you know, like I said, he'll make that 5%, a hundred percent. And Amen. so I, I know, like I said, for you, you know, this is just, you know, like you said, not looking for pity. No, right. Cause this is purpose. And this is about elevation Amen. and this is Amen. about what God is doing in your ministry. And so I'm excited about that, but I do know with that comes face challenges, right? We get on these faith roller coasters because we're yes. like, Wait a yeah. uh, everybody else were coming to pass, you know, I didn't prophesy yes. so and so, and they didn't got this, they didn't got that, you know, they're married or they didn't, they didn't got their house or they, you know, they, they're doing well. Yes. And God, what about me? Like, why yeah. isn't that prophetic gift working for me? And mm -hmm. so I don't know about you. I don't know about you guys. And, and I know y'all got the stories, but that's always my story. I'm like, wait a second now. Why? What, what's going on? Mm -hmm. what, what is going yeah. on prophetess Jenis, come on here. <laughs> yeah you know yeah i know we all have testimonies of you minister to someone and you believe in god and like okay god you know what is really going on um but it, that's honestly kind of a selfish perspective because for everything you know under the heavens there's a time and a season and i think I a lot it. of times we become yeah. entitled <laughs> because we are prophets Mm -hmm. We become very entitled because we're prophets and we'd be like, okay, God, you blessed them with this and I'm still waiting, you know, and because mm -hmm. of their pride, sometimes that's why that's we're still good. It, it's a shift of yeah, perspective. Gosh, you know, everything is about perspective. I listen, I'm determined to live a life of joy, peace and happiness. So for me, everything Amen. is about perspective. You know, I've been in those seasons. Lord, I'm still waiting. The Lord is like, that's why you're waiting because you're entitled because you're a prophet. And we mm -hmm. have to suffer well, just like everyone else. We have to endure hardness as a good yes. soldier, just like everyone else. Our gift does not exempt us from hardness and oh, suffering God, and test and in trial. You know, so sometimes we become a little entitled because we the prophet and we be mad <laughs> because folks got their stuff before we did. But we're in our in the, we're in our own individual process. And I think we have to be reminded Amen. of that. Sometimes mm -hmm. we're just entitled, you know, this is like Prophetess Kelly. She, she's learning, uh, she's know, getting to know God um, to be a healer in a way that she's never known him before. So, Amen. you know, in different seasons, you know, God tests us or God allows the enemy to come in and then he shifts that thing um, for one of the greatest testimonies that we've ever had. So, yeah, I think Prophetess, we, we become a little entitled sometimes. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. that's true. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah. and I, yeah we do um and I think mm -hmm. it's too because we see God moving and we see him working mm -hmm. and um and so never will we you know I don't think we coming into the prophetic ministry and this is too why we have to even those you know 
guys, if you're listening, and if you feel like you're called to the prophetic ministry, listen, this, this walk can be very lonely at times. And mm-hmm. you, you have to stay in a, in a, in a, in a position of humility and just staying at the feet of Jesus, you know, because mm-hmm. oftentimes you, you may think you're anointed, but God will quickly show you just how anointed you're not. Listen, Am I shy? that's I, true. I that. <laughs> that is so, so true. Um, and so I bless, I bless you for that, that just that, that comment on that entitlement, because that's, that's that time God will really show you like, you're not as anointed as you really think you are, you or as go you feel it. you are, I, I, I'm, I'm in control here. And yeah. so, <laughs> you know, so, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, you did, you the prophet, you know, sometimes we prophesy the Red Sea open, we do all these things and God is like, uh-uh you know, sit here, mm-hmm. sit here. So I'll allow you to go through things or I'll allow you to suffer through things just to show you who I am. And so, and that, you know, your, your dependence is on me and not your gift. And I think mm-hmm. sometimes even, you know, when I was, you know, younger in the prophetic, you know, I was excited about, you know, prophesying like, Oh Jesus, you know, I just wanted to prophesy to everybody, you know, everybody get a word, everybody, you know, get encouragement. And so, but I, I, I found out real fast, as fast as that started, as fast as it stopped, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, because it's, as, as excited as I was about the prophetic, I found myself real lonely. Oh, know? yes. And, mm-hmm. and so that was hard for me. I couldn't understand. I said, now, God, this is a great gift. This is a great office. But why is it so lonely? Why? Oh, Jesus, why is it just me and you? Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm sorry, y'all, look, I'm getting a little, oof, geez, I'm getting a little teary eyed. So, you know, why is it just me and you? Why is it that I can't seem to connect, you know, with anyone? Why can't, you know? And so there are times where God will, uh, you know, it, it's just you and him because he's processing you, you know, he's taking you through, you know, he's, you know, developing you. And sometimes we have to be developed in Egypt. You know, I remember, you know, and so, and it don't feel good. And I know a lot of you right now that are listening to this girl talk, you know, you may be in ministry or you may be called to a place and you feel like, oh, I got this extraordinary word about ministry, how God's going to use me, but yet I'm lonely. Yet I feel a certain type of way because nobody's calling me maybe, or nobody's booking me or nobody's, I don't know why this is coming up, uh, but you know, nobody seems to take notice of the anointing, but maybe it's just that God has you in a season of process Mm -hmm. and servitude. And so sometimes, you know, it ain't about who's around you and it ain't about how many friends or how many people like you because some people will like your gift but won't like you you know that is mm-hmm. so true that is so true say that so we have to you know just again you know just just be just be okay sometimes with being alone because this office mm-hmm. comes with that so you may not get the million friends you know That's um, right listen they but jesus they came for the fishes and the loaves mm-hmm. okay they ate and left mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> they ate they ate the <laughs> prophet is mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what is so powerful and i was just telling my church this a few weeks ago is that the chosen we have to be okay with probably about 95 percent of the people we meet are our assignment prophets marry their assignments prophets befriend their assignments prophets mm. become girl talk buddies with who is really supposed to be an assignment meaning they're only supposed to identify with your divinity not your humanity mm-hmm. and we look at the life of jesus who is our model we see that there was the multitudes but the bible says that jesus knew them all and because jesus knew them all he discerned capacity and he knew that he could make the multitudes the 12 you know we mm-hmm. see those who follow jesus we see mm-hmm. the multitudes we see the the 12 we see the 72 and then we also see the three jesus discerned a a placement and capacity and even after you know even outside of his homies which were uh, 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 or I would say his members because really Jesus was the disciples pastor he was their spiritual father mm-hmm. you know even out of the 12 you know there was the three and if we could get that revelation because a lot of times we mess up 
I almost married my assignments. I've been engaged twice and I almost married people. God called me to call them out of a place and I fell in love. So we have to stay mm -hmm. in a consecrated place because of not, we will misplace people and then it end in heartbreak because we put them mm -hmm. in a place that they didn't have the capacity to feel. You know, Amen. most people we meet will be an assignment. And we have to be okay with that. Amen. We gotta be okay with that. Oh, that's oof. that's hard. Yeah. It's, it's very hard. hard. You know, mm -hmm. prophetess. Um, also, in that God never popularity contest in the kingdom. He's called us to be in influencers, and so a lot of people when they get a few friends, a few followers, and they start. Um, you know, having a, a small following or, or, or on a platform, it, it just goes to their head. And so they, they lose themselves in that popularity in that moment of the 15 minutes of fame. And God is calling us to be influencers, um, show his light to the world, you know, be influencers mm -hmm. and draw men unto him. And so sometimes our isolation the t the period of isolation we're going through is because god never called us to that platform we were supposed mm -hmm. to build our own platform not that we are not um, submitted to leaders or not that we don't have a leader or, or we're under leadership but god sometimes puts us in a position and keeps us in a, a place of isolation so we don't get tainted by the other mess in ministry that other people have had to go through before us and he's protecting mm -hmm. us he's keeping oh. us in protect mm -hmm. for a uh, protective custody now you preach it here you preach it you <laughs> protective <preaching>. custody <laughs> to keep us safe and keep our our gifts pure and be mm -hmm. untainted and be uninfluenced by people that are just in it for the wrong reasons well, that's good. That's good. Um, and that's so true because God doesn't want us painted. You know, he don't want flies flying around in the oil. You know, that ain't what mm -hmm. that ain't what he called us to. That's Although, right. you know, we've seen it done wrong. And right. God said, you right. know, because we've seen it done wrong, don't mean we have to do it wrong. That's exactly. right. So God that's will literally right. disconnect you from that's people. Right. He will, you know, <laughs> shut you down. And so, um, and so I, I agree with that. You know, but we got to be okay. We we got to yes. be okay with that, mm -hmm. even though it's a lonely road, like you said, uh, seasons of isolation. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, it, especially being a prophet, you guys mouthpiece. You know, so if you know when you're guys mouthpiece, guess what? You're going to be in isolation because you should be praying so you can prophesy. If you ain't exactly. praying, <laughs> listen. You got to pray in order to prophesy. <laughs> listen. <laughs> If you ain't praying, you prophesying illegally. Where you getting your power from? Come on, church. Come on. Well, you know, you, you got to question the source, you know. So, yes, mm -hmm. isolation is necessary uh, to our all of our prophetic friends. It is. And so, yes, mm -hmm. you may feel a certain type of way. You may feel, mm -hmm. oh, my God, you know, I tried to connect with so-and-so. or I tried to get, Maybe it ain't the season for it for you to be connected exactly. with so-and-so. It's just to see that for you to be connected to God, to get on your face, to hear what thus said the Lord, especially if you're calling yourself God's mouthpiece. And, then, like, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's just how it's designed. That's, you know, you don't hear about Elijah having a lot of friends. You don't hear about Elisha having yeah. a lot of friends. You know, Elisha had Ge Gehazi, which was, he was just as wicked as he wanted to be. And, um, you know, nothing gets Gehazi, you know, but he, you know, he, he you know, he was sort of questionable. Um, <laughs> And so, um, and then you had, you, you had Daniel, you have, you didn't see them, you know, running in packs. Now you saw the school of prophets. Come on, Shay. Hey, mm -hmm. hallelujah. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, Lord. I'm so sorry. Thanks. I know this is girl talk. But I'm just speaking. Ooh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. I just got out of Bible study, saints. So <laughs> <laughs> yes you know you had the school of prophets and mm -hmm. and so uh, one thing I don't want uh, us to do is just because we don't have free, you know maybe God has you disconnected in a season of you know well in the season of isolation 
mm-hmm. for the pro- for for processing or whatever whatever. And sometimes it's our character. Sometimes God is trying to get our character. Oh together. yeah. Because yeah. sometimes oh, we can yeah. be so gifted, but our character can just be so ragged, Ooh, ragged. Yeah. You know, we rock around here. We we, we raggedy Andes and Ands, and so God <laughs> is saying, uh uh-uh. uh, <laughs> not Andes and Ands. <laughs> You, you know, Lord, that was directly answered, you know. Um, and God says, no, I need to, I need to, I need to take that out. I need to put some, you know, God says, I won't put sugar and spice and everything nice in there. And, you know, right <laughs> now, ain't nothing nice in there. You know, you're scaring people away. And so yeah. um, sometimes we are processed, you know, so sometimes God says, uh-uh, before I will allow you to mishandle people, I will put Amen. you back up. I'm going to put you in Amen. this timeout here over here. And so, and it's okay to be in timeout. It's okay because it's, it's for our building. It's, and it's so we can be effective when it comes to uh, not just ministry, but when God does send divine connections and friendships, okay. you, won't mis- you won't mistreat your friends. Amen. <laughs> it's very Some true. People, it's so true. Some people do not know how to be friends. <laughs> the Bible says a friend loveth at all times and a brother is born for adversity. Mm-hmm. I say this, that friends love and cover and brothers war for and protect. People do not, especially in ministry, I don't know who taught these people. I don't. Prophet I don't Kelly, either. Prime Minister Genesis, I don't, yeah, I don't know, know, know who raised these people. Uh-huh. Like, where did y'all come from? <laughs> no, right. <laughs> Where? I'm serious. Like, who, who raised you? It's okay to be mean. Who said? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, I come from teaching that your yay is your yay and your yay and your no is your no. And if you mm-hmm. say you're going to do something, you actually do it. Yes. You, know, mm-hmm. you don't just say things in the heat of the moment, but you be accountable for what you say. Yes. You know, you're like, I'm going to bring you in, Doc. I'm going to bring you in. You don't hear from me. They say the same thing Stop every time. Lying. You speak up. Stop lying. It's really okay. I don't want to come no way. It's really okay. Stop lying. <laughs> Stop lying. You know, people lie for conversation in the name of God. Cut it out. Yeah. Thank you for saying it. Somebody needs yes. to say it. Thank you. Thank uh, uh, you. What's your information? What's your information? I'm going to bring you in. And then they say the same stuff every time. You'd be like, okay, at this point, just say hi, God bless you. <laughs> Yes, because you said that three years ago and I ain't heard nothing from you. Like, just stop it. I mean, who raised these people? I'm serious. <laughs> no, it's, very well, it's, it's, it's their character. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. uh, when you have, when you're, when you're out there, you know, and your character is, you know, flawed, you know, you're, mm-hmm. you're ineffective at that point. Now, mm-hmm. you, you know, you may hobnob with whoever, whoever, but God is not pleased with that. And Amen. so, um, I believe in being processed. Listen, Mm -hmm. I'll be very transparent. You know, I said, I said I was called, let's see, I could prophesy with the best of them when I was 12, Mm -hmm. you know, but when I got really called to ministry, um, Mm -hmm. I I got set. I set for like seven or eight years. Mm -hmm. Um, I could, now, now I got permission to prophesy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I got sad mm-hmm. like no you ain't taking no speaking engagements you ain't doing nothing matter of fact you can mm-hmm. preach preach your little message on Thursday nights but then and, go, and listen, go have, then go sit then go sit that's down. what I told my saints at this church y'all ain't going nowhere this is your ministry right here we're building something <laughs> you want to preach preach and if you talking about you nervous to preach in front of me ain't no need you going to the nation <laughs> no I'm gonna criticize you but I'm going to give you tools not to keep making the same mistakes. In the nations, baby, they're going to chew you and spit you out, you oh. know? So if you can't preach here and hold your ground, what do you think about going out there? Because they don't care nothing about you. Mm-mm. You're going you're gonna to be another laughing stock on Facebook and then you're going to want to commit suicide because <laughs> everybody laughing at you. No, yes. Yeah. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> I'm serious. You, pre- you get your little step right here. You leave prayer. You exhort and you can't do that here. I ain't no need to talk about you finna get an itinerary. Mm-mm. You see your little self right here, Dominion. <laughs> and get you some power so that you can pierce through any atmosphere. Amen. Come on. <laughs> and that's what it's so- about. <laughs> I'm serious. Listen, I know about that. My, you know, my. <laughs> <laughs> so my you know my apostle uh joe green senior god bless him mm-hmm. and my first lady and my and my husband prophet 
uh, Jermaine Green. I love he's on Prime here. I, oh God, he, he's on here. Your like, husband uh, is so encouraging. He is the uh, the rebuke. The I think the rebuker of all rebukers. Uh, I've never been rebuked so much in the last seven <laughs> the last seven years, and so but <laughs> but it's good. Mm-hmm. It's good, you know, mm-hmm. and so um, sometimes again okay, you have to. It don't matter how gifted you are. Sometimes you got to sit and learn, mm-hmm. and then to learn holiness, learn foundation. You know, come on, we come on. We sometimes we are here, we gifted, oh, but we don't know Jesus. So how we are here, we prophesying, but who we where, where we get our information from? Mm-hmm. And so that that's important. Come on here, I'm reminded of a divination girl that pointed to Paul and Silas and said, "Hey, these are the men that know mm-hmm. the way." Okay, mm-hmm. but yeah, you 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 saying was right, but you ain't right. You know, so um, I understand process. I understand mm-hmm. sitting and waiting and there's nothing wrong with it because like Elisha, you know, when that mantle was thrown on him, he didn't, he didn't prophesy immediately. He didn't just go, oh, I got the mantle. Now let me prophesy. Oh no, he had to serve. What? Come on. We, we got to get water. You know, we don't even get water right. I was we listen, y'all. Go back to the basics. I wasn't even on the, <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't even on the, the, what's that? The, uh, not the housekeeping committee. What's house? Thank you. The hospitality committee. I wasn't even on the committee. And girl, I was getting the water. I was getting the candy. Okay. And, mm-hmm. and, and was proud to do it. And sometimes I feel like, you know, mm-hmm. God is not even just feel like I know the Lord is looking for, and I don't know why we just went this way. Um, he's looking for a heart of servitude. Oh, and so if you're going to be used in this, if, if anyone, if you're going to be used in this mm-hmm. hour, those who are listening, mm-hmm. you've got to have a heart of servitude. You've got to, you've got mm-hmm. to serve. And no one said you got to do it for seven years. You know, your process may not look like mine. It may not look right. like Prophetess Genesis. It may not look like Prophetess Kelly's, but you're mm-hmm. going to have to serve. You're going to have to be processed. You can't do this unprocessed. Nobody wants a whole olive. Mm. And you know what, Prophetess Margaret and Prophetess Genesis, you even though when when you when you're a, a pastor or when you're a prophet or a prophetess and when you're traveling and preaching, I, I still serve. Like I, I mean, mm-hmm. there's mm-hmm. no, I, I was. You don't outgrow. You serving. don't ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you outgrow serving, you might as well go sit down somewhere and go <laughs> yeah, be quiet service. in the corner somewhere. Go, go away. <laughs> Bye, because mm-hmm. I, I um, I don't know where I was. I was preaching somewhere. But I was there for a couple of days, and so there was another leader there. But I, I served her. She didn't have anybody to help her, so I, yes. I was wow. people like that's good, like okay. giving her water, like making sure she had her towel. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm not saying that's a mm-hmm. brag. It's just a point that you never, yes. you never get above serving. If you're, mm-hmm. if you um, are too big for this and too big for that, or this and that, and you're this and you're that, and mm-hmm. you can't help anybody, and you can't do that, you can't, you're untouchable, then God, what, why, why would God need you in his kingdom? Exactly. Jesus was the servant of all servants. Yes. So, mm-hmm. And so that is our example. And so we're mm-hmm. to be, we're to be just like that. No matter, you could be a billionaire and still serve. That's Come right. On Come on here. We you, still clean the church. Me, me, you you have your private church. jet, but you're still serving because you have a heart. Listen, you have a heart mm-hmm. of God. Like your heart mm-hmm. is, is literally the heartbeat of God is in you. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. I just wanted to say that for somebody because somebody's like, well, I am a prophet. You, know, you, you need to get up, get over all that. I'm Kelly. Get over it. Day, you know? Get over yourself. Yes. Get over it. Please. Like, listen, yes. I baby, listen. It. It's too I, much. Mm-hmm. Some of this stuff is too <laughs> Prophet, much. Listen, pro- prophets specialize in cleaning bathrooms. You hear me? Wow. Because <laughs> we- let me tell you, I used to do the same thing in my church. I was the house prophet many years ago. I was young. I think I was like nineteen, and I was the house prophet. And I would clean the toilets. I would vacuum the floors. I would get the yes. water bottle off the floor and all of that and any church I've ever served in any capacity associate pastor whatever guess what pastor I will be your armor bearer I will be the last yes. person I will be the first Come person in the church I will make sure that that everything is conducive for all yes. you have to yes. worry about yes. is ministering you don't have to worry about yes. I'm afraid of people that you gave somebody one prophecy and they cried and now you are above servitude Come on here. It doesn't work like that. Mm-mm. It does. 
you lay hands on one person and they fell out and now you know you you always late to church absolutely not Mm -mm. (laughs) after this morning stop (laughs) no <laughs> but I'm see, that's the spirit of this this generation. When I say this generation, I'm not just necessarily talking about the millennial generation, but mm-hmm. I'm saying like this this demographic of preachers and the people we see, you know, it's such a you know, you got a briefcase with nothing in it and you got business cards with no word, you know. I mean, cut it out. But I'm telling you, we are the days of all of that are coming to an end. There's a Amen. glory that's coming to the local church. The yes. greatest prophets that we are about to see are those who are planted in a local assembly. I'm Amen. telling you, it, it's, it's about to be crazy what God is doing. Like, seriously, um, this pandemic is really working in our favor. And oh, God yeah. is also, I even yeah. believe that there's a connection that's even going to come with the three of us even after this, God is, yes. God. God is connecting his people together because there's such a great work um, before us. We have to purify the prophetic. Um, the prophetic is so tainted, wow. the mind games, the manipulations, um, the deceit, the, I mean, the uh, Luciferian spirit, the spirit of the Antichrist, um, this new age demon that many prophets are, uh, exploring and taking on so we have we have to purify the prophetic amen and so we have to come together um as one voice and speak the same language to uproot these systems because and i told my church just a while ago that god is pulling us from many systems from many systems and also um many times we view rejection as a bad thing but sometimes reject people reject us because we don't identify with their perversion you know, oh, they wow. know we're different. Yeah, that they know we're different. They say know that, we're set apart. Say that again. Wow. I Sometimes like people reject us because we do not identify with their perversion. My God. Wow. My God. So sometimes people don't want your light. They want to stay Ooh. in darkness. So they shut out the light because they want to play around in darkness. You know, Amen. And sometimes we've taken things personal. It's not personal, it's spiritual. We are the light. And when you are really about this thing, when you don't sit in green rooms and gossip, when you don't tear people down, Come when you don't do on. evil things, people don't want to have anything to do with you, but it's okay. Because this is a day where the authentic and the true and the purified and the process and the consecrated prophets oh are arriving. God. And we're not going nowhere. We are here to tear down, that to up good. and to build. You know, yes. and so God is bringing us all together by any means necessary to let you know, you know, don't have the Elijah syndrome. I have 7,000 more prophets who have, hallelujah, who yeah, have not child. bowed to Baal. He has prophets who have not bowed to Baal, but sometimes because we may feel like we're the only one in our vision or in our region or, you know, amongst people that we know, but God is showing us, and I believe tonight is even prophetic, where God is showing us, you're not the only one. I have those who have not bowed, those who are still standing in purity, Amen. those who say, I'm mm-hmm. not perfect, but I love Jesus, Ooh, and Jesus. I will not sell my soul sure. for a moment. You know, so Ah. there are people like us all over the world and God is using unconventional uh, um, ways and events to to draw us together because there's a great assignment ahead. So I'm sorry. Y'all can go on. No. Jesus. Listen. Wow. My God. (laughs) I'm excited. I'm excited about what God is doing because he's purifying the prophetic. Mm -hmm. And he's silencing voices some voices were once pure, but because of fame, because of money, Ooh, because of the lack of Stay process, there. because people promoted, because people promoted their gift above uh, uh, what they could handle. So we are seeing a silencing of some, but we're seeing a raising up of another. And even though, uh, and even some who maybe have felt as if they had a season. Um, but by, but because of uh, uh, demons and principalities where the enemy sought to silence their voice, we are about to see a re-emergence of people who saw them in season, mm. but the enemy got in the way. But the Lord, and I even just hear the Lord saying now that he is unveiling his prophets, because many of what we've seen, they are not prophets of Yah, they are prophets of Baal. 
They are My prophets, God. wow, of, of, of darkness. But we are about to see an unveiling of purified, authentic prophets who have allowed God to consecrate their ears, to circumcise their ears and their heart to release the unadulterated gospel. The gospel liberates. The gospel mm. brings liberty. The gospel brings peace. The prophetic word turns hearts back to God. So yeah, we are about to see a purity in the prophetic and I'm extremely excited about that. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. Amen. Like Amen. You, you're in the vein. That's, Amen. that's the shift that we are already in and mm -hmm. it's been released. And so I'm mm -hmm. excited about it. Mm -hmm. um prophetess kelly go go ahead go ahead uh, well just to just to i just want to say you know this year um and i know we've been um since march we've been in this pandemic but i will say just since the beginning of the year god has been just allowing me to connect with uh new people that are there there's just such a purity just that mm -hmm. even just you two mm -hmm. are just you know just refreshing to me you're like a, a breath of fresh air and a, a couple of years ago, the spirit of the Lord spoke to me and he said, I want you to begin to, to speak this to the people. But he said, it's time to be cycle breakers and system creators and mm -hmm. break, break mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. systems that have been set in place and the systems that people keep. Um, it's kind of like they, they keep, um, they, they keep these systems in place and these, mm -hmm. these, these, just these ideals and these, um, I, I don't even know these these demonic strategies and the, the, the mm -hmm. territorial, this territorial demonic um, pockets that are put in place. And, mm -hmm. and they, they've been able to put these cycles in place that are on repeat. And God is saying, it's time now to break the cycles, be a, a cycle breaker and a system creator and begin to create new systems. I mean, we, we taught, we, I see so many people, I, I travel and preach and talk to people and mentor people and, and see so many people after all these years you're still sitting in the same position or are still in poverty still. you're still yes. here you're still where you were when I saw mm -hmm. you five years ago mm -hmm. why like what what why is there no effectiveness and it's mm -hmm. because people are being they it's like a net of of demonic activity has mm -hmm. been it's mm -hmm. almost like they've been, they've been underneath this net and mm -hmm. it's disguised as God, but God's nowhere there. And so a lot of people are, are sitting in pews or sitting in churches or, or attached to ministries where it's really, uh, and I know this, this, I know it may sound harsh what we're saying, but it's the truth that, mm -hmm. that really what's being released is witchcraft and, and God is, he's, Come on. he's not, he's not pleased. And so mm -hmm. he's saying, now I'm raising up, I'm raising up sons and daughters who will be brave enough and be strong enough to create new systems for people to actually be mm -hmm. free. Mm -hmm. People, are, people are being manipulated and held mm -hmm. in bondage and, and crippled and never being allowed to prosper. And it's just, mm -hmm. a, it's a complete spirit of witchcraft over mm -hmm. the people of God. And God is, God is shifting. God is shifting everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. God is, he's definitely shifting. Or let me say he's, he's already shifted. And so this move is upon us. It's here. And mm -hmm. so um, it, it, it's not time. Oh, let me hurry up and get right. No, you should come on. You, know, you should have mm -hmm. thought about that. You know, that's right. You yourself. Amen. And so I just bless God that he's doing what he's doing because it is necessary. Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. time to restore people back. You know, there are so, so many people that are unrestored based off of what they've seen, what, mm -hmm. you know, in leadership, in the church, yes. you know, and so I, I just bless God for what he's doing. And so listen, guys, we are, uh, my administrator just said, we're going over time, but it's okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's like, okay. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Now, um, something you both said, um, you know, concerning, you know, you know, people who, you know, of course, you know, they're not, they, they're worshipers of Baal and, you know, they, they've been doing, in the, doing, you know, just ministry in their own spirit. Do you mm -hmm. all believe that that's a, that's a result of a lack of accountability? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yes. Because what I, what I've seen, uh, I've, se I've seen people connected, but not accounted for. Mm -hmm. That's good. good. That's good. Very mm -hmm. good. 
So mm-hmm. why do you, so let me ask you, but why do you think that is, especially in the prophetic community, you see so many people connected, but not accounted. They don't have accountability. So there's no, you know, there's no accountability, but there's, con- but they're connected. You know, that, I, you know, I don't, I hate to bring the story up, but I was watching in uh, the news about the prophet who killed his wife mm-hmm. and which, which was really sad, mm-hmm. um, you know, tr- a very tragic story. You know, but they were saying, you know, he was our, he was this and he was that, and you know. But when you go to when you go to his Facebook page, he was connected to a lot of, you know, apostles, you know, pastors, prophets, and yep. some even well known. And even you know, one person, which it kind of, I was kind of saddened that they posted his picture and said, um, "Look at this," you know, this. I'm just going to paraphrase what she said. She just said, look at this pastor. Uh, he he killed his wife and a lot of you all were following him. And so pretty much you didn't have discernment. You know, and it, it wasn't for me, it wasn't that she posted that. It was just that she was one of the ones that was following him. So the the accountability, my thing is, so why if if the people that didn't if all the other people were following him didn't have discernment where was where was the accountability for you when it came to that man of god you do y'all understand what i'm saying or no yeah yeah Yeah. i I, I totally i totally get what you're saying and i'm just gonna say this ephesians 5 and 21 tells us to submit to one another out of reverence for christ to christ okay out of reverence for christ um i think and i know that a lot of people have pastors only pastors and friends and colleagues in the title, but not in function. Mm-hmm. It takes a certain caliber of a man, a certain caliber of a woman to properly cover mega gifts. Period. Mm-hmm. It just does. Everybody that's coming out with a fellowship cannot pastor mega gifts. Amen. Everybody that's have a network of pastors cannot cover mega gifts okay it takes a special grace and most people who are able to cover mega gifts are not mega in popularity but they're mega in consecration that's a whole nother story right there however um accountability is both horizontal and vertical i believe that you need people in your life who are who you are able to submit to this way and also this way You need the leader, whether it's your apostle, your spiritual father, whoever covers you. And then you need your friends. Why? Because your leader doesn't know everything. God doesn't show your leader every little thing. You need people in mid conversation can be like, why are you going to their to their person's conference? They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power. You know what I'm saying? Because Mm -hmm. your pastor don't know that you follow them. Your pastor don't even follow you on Facebook. There are many people (laughs) I pastor and I do not follow them on social media. I really on purpose, you know, um, because, you know, people get in their feelings and start throwing out and I have to keep a clear conscience, you know, from all of the foolishness. Mm-hmm. So um, vertical and horizontal accountability is so important. Like, hey, girl, you know, I saw you follow this person. Like, this person is like vexed with so many demons. Like, I don't think it's safe to follow them, you know. Mm-hmm. Now, some people are hard-headed and they do not believe in submitting. Who are you? You're not my pastor. That's a very carnal um, response. But one mm-hmm. thing I've learned, Prophetess, is that a lot of people do not like accountability Mm. they like the idea of it but people don't like hearing things about themselves that they haven't previously perceived Mm -hmm. they just don't so a lot of people Mm. say i want to be held accountable but then when you're held accountable you offended me you hurt my fit no crazy i'm trying to save your life i'm trying to save false demonic impartations so for some Mm. people i don't some people have accountability they don't listen some of these people don't listen. They don't. So this is my take on it. And I, I agree with you. You know, mm-hmm. what, what I guess too, what people don't understand is that accountability is what creates growth. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. It's what creates change. Mm-hmm. You know, and then so you want you want someone to be truthful and honest with you. It's like mm-hmm. if I walked outside with a pair of white pants on and I thought I was cute. Okay, you know, we know how to get cute. And mm-hmm. so, <laughs> uh, but I had dirt on the back of my pants and, mm-hmm. but you riding with me, you, you don't tell me that I'm, that my pants are dirty in the mm-hmm. back, 
well then what then you know what type of accountability are you mm-hmm. i need somebody that's going to say hey you, i know you think you're cute now but your pants are dirty you need to go change your pants that's right and and, and not feel a certain yeah, type yeah. way that's that right hurt, you know that's really helping me you know that's I, right I, listen i i my skin is tough you know i can i can take it mine too you know, and you gotta yeah, you gotta get too. your skin too <laughs> you mm-hmm. know but if you if you want to be healthy if you want growth if you want change and two uh god says he's i love those who i chastise so you know if you mm-hmm. you know rebuke and reprove you know that's love mm-hmm. that ain't that ain't that's right and a lot of times i, I believe <laughs> you we look at that oh you hating or you you got something against me oh no, girl, she just you know, she hates on my she hates on my fly you know no but no, no. You know, we're trying. You, we're trying to help you get it together, exactly. and I don't. And I guess I don't understand why we take the approach of defense instead mm-hmm. of the, the the approach of receiving. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And if we're talking about is, accountability. I, uh, you know, with accountability, I think we we see, and I see this all the time. I'm sure you guys do too, on social media, especially. You see, like somebody calling somebody dad or mom or. Um, or this is my spiritual dad, or this is that, or, and I think as leaders that cover people, I think sometimes there's a disconnect. And so maybe, maybe you have viewed them as your spiritual father or spiritual mother, but maybe they aren't connected to you enough. Like there's, mm-hmm. there's, some of them don't even know not, them. What? Come on here. Okay. I'm going to be real. I'm going, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. How you calling them? How, now see y'all my country grammar that's that's that same word <laughs> country okay. grammar that just came out uh how are you calling so, and and i'm not knocking this but i'm just trying mm-hmm. to understand it mm-hmm. how are you calling someone who's never toyed with you who's never prayed with right. you who's never ministered who's never you know uh-uh how, how are they your spiritual mother and your spiritual father yeah you may watch them on youtube but what about your local what about the ones that are that that's crying with you that's, that's, mm-hmm. that's bombarding heaven on your behalf. Come on here. You know, we got to learn how to appreciate those that are really, you know, on the forefront for us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, and I'm just being real. But you know, it's we, true. yeah, you, you're right. We, 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 oh, that's my, and you got, and they got about 50 million of them. You know, mm-hmm. this is my spiritual, this is my spiritual mama, this is my spiritual mm-hmm. mama. And I'm like, well, what, mm-hmm. who, who, okay, well, who, let me know which one which do they one even know your name like do they right. call you do they pray for do you, do you have a personal connection uh, and then people that are easily offended can never elevate and so the the, mm-hmm. the, the, the people that are afraid of being res- having um, a sense of responsibility or being accountable or they are offended when they are directed or given a rebuke or tried to eat somebody's trying to help them to be better and they're easily offended, they're never going to elevate. And that's what people have to understand. You have to get to a place where you can receive. Okay. Somebody said, right, most leaders aren't friendly. Well, no, I would I wouldn't um say that most leaders aren't friendly. I'm I'm looking in the in the in the comments. It's just that you have to find the right leader and be God led to the leader that's for you, who yeah. God has called you to. And so, and if you are in a church and you feel like God has not placed you there, I wouldn't advise church hopping, but I would advise praying and asking God. Uh, because mm-hmm. every, all leaders aren't mean and, and stuck up and, 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 no. and ratchet. That, that's, that's, not, that's, that's, not, uh, that's not the testimony here. Mm-hmm. It's just that you have to find the right church for you. And so mm-hmm. I guess the discrepancy here is that when you have too many leaders, it's how much you eating off of all these tables and a lot of the stuff you eat, it may be poison. You, you know, right. you, you drink, you're drinking juice and the juice is laced with, you know, garbage, you, you know, mm-hmm. and so, I'm just, so mm-hmm. it, it's just true. important to be faithful to uh, your, your local and those that are really pouring into you and those that are praying for you, those that are, those that are on the battlefield for your soul. I think some people forget their lead. So, guys, if you, so guys, we're going to take some questions. Is that okay, real quick? Mm-hmm. Sure. Okay. So, some, okay. So, someone said, I think some people forget their leader. Their leaders are human. Okay. I can't see the question. Hey, Candace, can you, can you give me the questions if you don't mind? Okay. She said, I think some people forget their leaders are human and God is the center and gets the glory. 
So I love my brothers and sisters in Christ. We need to love each other with Christ's love and receive with Christ's love too. Amen. I agree. I agree with that. Um, accessible, basically. Not all, but some are accessible. Basically, I'm not for sure what she what she's saying with that. Are there any more questions on there? Okay, good. So listen, guys, at this time, we are going to take questions. So if you have any questions, just go ahead and put them in the chat. We're going to be wrapping up our conversation, our Sister to Sister Nationwide Girl Talk for the evening. And I just want to thank Prophetess Genesis Warren and Prophetess Kelly Cruz. Yes, for, uh, thank you. <laughs> for, for just gracing us with their time and and having this chat with us because again sometimes we don't need to be preached at sometimes we don't need to be taught at or uh, taught to but just to have a conversation and yeah. so um i know for me i bless god for my leaders um it hasn't always been peaches and cream i didn't mm -hmm. always agree with what my leaders had to say or mm -hmm. i didn't always agree with the the tactics or even you know the rules that they had in place mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I didn't you know mm -hmm. and so but I still followed I still served and I still loved them regardless to what I disagree with you know That's you right. can agree to disagree but you have That's to right. do it respectfully and so and just because you agree it doesn't mean that you uh you you trade your leader for somebody else <laughs> you know you eat you eat at their church but you 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 on Facebook listening to somebody else come on you know we can't do that that's disrespectful mm -hmm. come on here mm -hmm. how you expect to be blessed somebody uh, said God has kept me in a place of isolation is that a good thing okay so prophet is born prophet is Kelly uh the question is God has kept me in a place of I God has kept me in a place of isolation is that a good thing uh, I, I will say it, you have to, it, you have to first know, is it really God keeping you in the place of isolation? That's what I'll say mm -hmm. first, because if, if it's your flesh or if it's you, or if it's you using it as a defense mechanism and you've kept, you've kept yourself in a place of isolation, that's not a good thing. But if you know that God has, and, and when <laughs> God isolates you, he may, isolate you for a season to protect you but that doesn't mean he's he's cutting you away from everything so you have That's to good. be mindful of what you're calling isolation and not like shutting yourself in a room for the next year by yourself not having any contact with people and like that mm -hmm. that can lead to a whole other area where the enemy can start attacking you so you you have to be mm -hmm. mindful of of the voice of god directing you in this season Amen. I believe no man is an island. No man That's is right. An right. Exactly. Um, you know, you, God has not called us to be hermits. Okay. He, he, he's called us to interact, Amen. you know, and that's even, that goes along too with accountability. If you're in isolation all the time, who are you accountable to? Amen. You know? And so you, you need that. You need the human interaction is needed. Um, prophetess Warren. So somebody wants to know, how do you know when you are called to the office of a prophet? <laughs> Um, that is not a simple answer. Um, it's not because there are some prophets who are born and then there are some prophets who are made. I used to teach a long time ago, prophets are born and not made. However, one day I stumbled um, over the book of Amos and the Bible says that Amos was taken up and he was made a prophet. Uh, mm -hmm. He was not like Jeremiah you know mm -hmm. born a prophet so some prophets are born and some prophets are made however i would say this um prophets are affirmed if you are mm -hmm. a prophet a senior prophet meaning someone who has been walking in that office um in an integral way will affirm this is who you are called to be and when i say affirmed i'm not necessarily talking about a big ceremony or whatever but a prophet or an apostle would have identified that mm -hmm. you are called to this office you know Amen. so i'll just say Amen. That, uh, yeah just simplify it that's how you know of course um yeah i'll just keep it right there and affirmation mm -hmm. is so important too mm -hmm. um i was listening to uh apostle brian meadows and he's and he was just talking about you know affirmation and the importance of it when you are being when you are called, mm -hmm. and so uh, that that that's very important. Uh, someone else said, "I write a lot. What do you do with the writing? Do you do you all write?" Okay, 
So Prophetess Kelly, I'll have you answer that. I mean, I write a lot. Um, most of my writings, they're, they're books. Um, but when I write, I'm in, more inspired by the Lord, you know, when it, when it mm -hmm. comes to a book. So my mm -hmm. writings are Holy Spirit inspired. Mm -hmm. And so I would say, uh, Rosanda, if you're writing, um, pray, ask the Lord what to do with them. Are they books? Are they devotionals? You know, ask, mm -hmm. you know, just seek direction. And I believe God will uh, release that to you. Mm -hmm. I, I feel as if I can truly connect to, I, I feel as, I feel as if I can't, can't, can't truly connect on a friendship level with people. Uh, do me, I can't even. She said, I feel as if I can't truly connect on a friendship level with people due to me feeling disconnected from my gift, always picking up lies, deceit, fakeness, or losing spirit. Okay. Um, Prophet Kelly, did you want to answer that one? What was the last part? She she said she feels that she cannot connect with people. Uh huh. And she says she's feel disconnected uh, from my from her gift always because she says she she picks up lies, deceit, or fakeness, okay. or the using or a using spirit. Yeah, already. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. I well, no, it's okay. I I think that first of all, um, not well. Let me say this: not not everybody. And this is not to to um, discredit her in any way or whoever's asking the question, but not not everybody is going to have that type of spirit. So at some point, you have to whatever has come to hurt you or cripple you, or whatever has come to shut you down from um, being able to connect. You've really got to take time to deal with that first, and then ask God to let you see who's truly for you and 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 ask god to put people in your life that can show you a different side of life or a, a side of friendliness because not everybody's like that so at some point um we've got to take a look at ourselves and say god why mm -hmm. am i seeing things like this or what has mm -hmm. hurt me or what has crippled me to make me look at everything like this so mm -hmm. i would say nothing not to prophetess margaret i'm not like attacking or saying anything against who's asking the question but first like start with yourself take an introspective look and then say god help me see differently in this season because something has hurt you to make you look at everything like that and that's mm -hmm. probably where you need to start amen and no i don't think you no no that was a that was a uh, a really really good answer uh what's what, unique um the lord says he is causing you to trust again there are some heart issues that you are dealing with in the area of trust and so um god says if you allow me to he said i will restore uh, your heart back and allow you to trust again so this is about trust said the lord amen amen, amen. one more question and this is our guys listen this is our last question we're going to take um, as a dreamer, how do I keep notes or how do I start journalism and do I share them or keep them to myself? Uh, Prophetess Warren, do you want to answer that? She's a, she's a dreamer. Yes. Dreams have to have interpretation. Dreams need interpretation. I would say that dreams are um, one of the least credible ways that God speaks and just hear me out. God does speaks in dreams. However, um, you want to make sure that what you're dreaming is not anything from your soulish realm. Sometimes we mm -hmm. dream, um, mm -hmm. hidden mm -hmm. desires, I mean, your unconscious state. I mean, you just, it's just weird. The dream world can be tricky. You need interpretation for your dreams, a vision, exactly what you see that's exactly what it is dreams need interpretation so Amen. i pray that you have someone in your life who is spiritual not a witch okay because a lot of um psychics and mediums and stuff they deal heavy with dream interpretation um mm -hmm. so you want to be careful that the that's why it's so important to be connected to an authentic apostolic prophetic house so because there will be gifts there that are under the same level of accountability that you're under. Um, 
but yeah, you need interpretation for gifts. Um, you have a dream, somebody got hit by a bus and you say, I had a dream about you. You got hit by a bus. Now you didn't release the spirit of paranoia, you know, because right. 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 it needs to be interpreted. Mm -hmm. wow. So dreams are very tricky. And sometimes that thing can seem so real. You would really think it's God and it's not. So you need people in your life. Like for me, my best friend, um, her most dominant gift, she's a prophetess, but her most dominant gift in the prophetic is dream interpretation. So, and that's probably like my least, um, you know, that's probably like a minor gift for me. Uh, I really have to really press in to see what God is saying. But my best friend, you tell her the gift and she asks you specific details. And then I mean, mm -hmm. I'll be like, man, I would have never got there from that, you know? So it's important to be connected to a community that can add to a lot of people are, um, they're witches and don't even know it because they're tapping into other realms to try yeah. to get information mm -hmm. that is only released that's to a good. consecrated ear or a consecrated eye. Amen. So you know, we want to be very careful of that. So yeah, baby, your gifts need um interpretation. Mm -hmm. And you gotta and make sure you're not you didn't had no Taco Bell the night before because you know we can have Taco Bell dreams too. Yeah, dream, you know you're, <laughs> what you eat and everything. The dream world you need you need you need strong accountability for your dreams because Amen. different foods mm -hmm. will make you dream certain things, hidden thoughts, hidden desires, mm -hmm. secret agreements, all of that. And you tell my God, show me this in the dream. You don't even know you praying a witchcraft witchcraft prayer because what you dream was a result of your heart. Your mm -hmm. wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you want to be careful. Wow. You need accountability. Um, as yeah. Yeah. Amen. So listen. Watch what you eating before you go to bed. Watch what you watch what you watching. Watch what you watch. That's right. <laughs> That's what the conversations you have. All of this. Mm -hmm. They can yeah, all affect all your dreams. So, so, so listen, guys. We're going to go ahead and we're going to close this thing out. I'm going to have Prophetess Kelly and Prophetess Genesis Warren just to pray over you tonight. Um, yeah, Taco Bell dreams. They happen. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said, Taco Lady, My yeah. phone is on red. So if my phone die, I love y'all. Okay? <laughs> it's okay. I'll be there. So probably, I'm going to have you just go ahead and go first. Uh, just, okay. Uh, pray if, or just release a word of encouragement over those that are um, listening tonight. This was an awesome uh, chat discussion uh, and so I, I just thank God for both of you and um, and for your ministries amen they are validated they're authentic and I just bless God for the authenticity amen, amen. thank, thank you. you so much for having me I think I've said enough so I'll just pray father I thank you for these are people who are logged in father I thank you for the first time viewers who follow who follow neither of us but that they were drawn and compelled to this lie. Father, I thank you that you are purifying the prophets in the name of Jesus. And as you are purifying us, you are purifying our acquaintances and connections in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you because friendship is a ministry. Send your people friends. Yes. Send them uh, divine connections in yes. the name of Jesus. Friends who would love them and brothers and sisters who will war for them and cover them in prayer in the name of Jesus. Yes. Father, I thank you for what you are doing. Purify our circles purify those who we are acquainted to in the name of jesus father i decree that every soul tie that every connection that we are holding on to out of a uh, formality uh, that has come to an end father give us the strength to walk away and to not feel bad about it in the name of jesus father i thank you for every prophet every prophetess may you start yes. your people like never before you, to be the difference to proclaim your word and to prepare you the way of the lord in the name of jesus father mm -hmm. i thank you and it is so in jesus name father i lose a thank special you. blessing over my sisters over prophetess uh, margaret green over prophetess kelly cruz father i thank you that thank you, you are jesus. doing their lives it is irrevocable father i thank you thank you jesus for the healing that's to come the total healing that's to come from prophetess kelly cruz father i thank you that the, anointing, the oil on her life is increasing in the name of yes, jesus and that every plan of hell is mm. being destroyed by fire yes, in the, the, name the, name the mighty name of jesus father i thank you for restoration i thank you for strength may the strength 
kingdom of God be her portion in the name of Jesus, Father. Your word says that it is in our weakness that your strength is made perfect. Father, strengthen her body now in the the name of Jesus, Father. I thank you even for Prophetess Green, Father. I thank you for the doors that you shall open, Father. I thank you for the increase of her network and her net worth in the the name of Jesus, Father. Increase your people, Father. Increase them for their purity. Open doors that no man can shut and close doors that no man can open. And I decree to be so in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I receive it. God Amen. bless you. I receive that. I receive it. Amen. Go ahead, Prophetess Kelly. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We continue tonight, God. And and God, even this time, Father, I thank you, Lord, that it was a a refreshing time, God. I pray that that whoever has tuned in tonight, Father, I thank you, Lord, that they they can know that there are genuine uh, people that love God, that not just love you, Father, that that love people, Father. And I just pray that you will just bring people into their lives that would truly show your love, God, that would would truly allow them to see that there is a a different type of person that you're raising up in this season god and and i thank you lord that we will be cycle breakers god we will we will create new systems father we will allow people to be god i i thank you lord that even uh as as we have come together tonight uh, as as um is coming on this with prophetess margaret and prophetess genesis god i pray that we would um, just be uh, examples god to your people father i pray that that even right now father that you are just allowing your sons and daughters to prosper god i pray that that even where they've been stuck in a place of still still here and still doing this and still there and stuck God, we cancel every assignment that has kept them crippled and handicapped and stuck. God, even even over the past five and ten years, God, we thank you, Lord, that you're redeeming time tonight, God. Father, I thank you, Lord, that that, that even right now, somebody that has been on here tonight, age is is, is not a factor. God is even allowing your vision to come to pass. And so, Father, I just thank you, Lord, tonight for this time and and just the the anointing that has been released. And God, I just pray that even right now for prophetess genesis god and her ministry god i pray that you will just allow god i thank you lord that her reach is expanding god you're causing her arms to reach further god i thank you lord for the the, just the influx god from the north the south the east and the west and the northeast and the northwest and the southeast and the southwest god god i just thank you lord that even right now god that even the the private victories that she's had god and and even just the, the you, private Jesus. moments that she's had with you that other people haven't seen yet god i thank you lord that even right now you're unveiling her to the earth god you're allowing god mm-hmm. there to be a public win god i thank you lord that you're allowing there to be a public win for her and so father we just give you glory even tonight for prophetess margaret god i just thank you lord for her yeah. heart god the heart <laughs> that she has for your people god even just the the international reach that she has god i just even pray right now that you will just continue god to expand her her tent pegs god just allow her 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 house to be blessed god in this season father i pray for expansion for her and her husband's ministry god and god we just thank you lord tonight for your glory being released god we thank you lord that you've canceled assignments of demonic pockets and the assignments of witches and warlocks and sorcerers tonight god uh, uh, just hexes are being broken god tonight God, I just thank you, Lord, that there is no more power that is being, uh, 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 there's no more power being released, God, in this season, uh, God, that that cannot be broken uh, by your power, God. And we just thank you, Lord, tonight for victory. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 God be the glory. Listen to all those that are online. Please share this, uh, this broadcast. Truly, it is a blessing to all those that will watch it. Amen. We want you all to be encouraged, be encouraged, be encouraged, be encouraged. I thank God for both my sisters here on tonight, and I just thank God for what's to come. Amen. Amen. So truly, this is, I know this is not the last time. Amen. I know uh, mm-hmm. we, got some, we got some talking to do. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to have to do a FaceTime group chat or something. Amen. Yeah. Yes. We, 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 we got some talking to do. 
Amen. I bless God for you all. So listen, guys, we love you all. We love you all. We want you all to be blessed. We pray the blessings of God over everyone on this, this live tonight. Uh, be restored, be renewed, and be blessed in Jesus' name. Thank God and amen.